I have had the very great honor of attending hundreds of births. I've been a midwife for almost 10 years. I cry every time. Baby is soft and warm and squishy and so sweet. It's not the baby that makes me cry. It's the mom. There's this moment after a baby is born when the room kind of stands still and you realize that you are in the presence of something inexplicably magical. I've been in the room when adoptive parents have met their babies and the feeling is the same. The world feels different because it is different. There's this new baby and there's this new mom. This is what it sounds like when a woman has just given birth. been in the room, you know she is full of power and confidence and beams with this glow of, look what I just did. Here's my question. At what point does the woman who did this become unimportant? It sounds ridiculous, right? We all know mothers. We probably love a mother or two. On an individual basis, of course we care about mothers. What about as a whole? I don't think we do. 85% of mothers do not believe that our society does a good job supporting them. 85%. Somewhere along the way, we stop taking care of mothers. And as you'll see, the consequences are dire. That also means that when we fix it, the impact will be profound. Because when mothers thrive, communities thrive. But first, let's take a look at what's happening to our mothers. There are a number of places it's fallen apart. I'll share two of the big ones. Most significantly, maternal mortality in the United States is rising, not declining. And let us not forget that the morbidity and mortality of motherhood is not a burden that is shared equally. Black women are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy, birth, and postpartum complications than white women. And when we look at maternal mortality as a whole, we see that over 50% of these deaths are preventable. So why aren't we preventing them? In countries around the world, they have policies and traditions that cocoon a new mother in respect and adoration. The United States is not one of those countries. There are only two countries in the world that do not offer paid maternity leave at a national level. The United States is one of those countries. To put it in perspective, in Sweden, they get 480 days of paid maternity leave that they can share with a partner. In the United States, only 17% of women have access to paid maternity leave. I'm ready for this. Nearly one out of four women have to return to work within two weeks of giving birth. She's likely still bleeding from her birth at this point, by the way. If, as a society, we thought that mothers were important, I don't believe that any of these facts would be the case. We are asking mothers to nurture in a society that does not nurture them back. It's overwhelmingly distressing to live in a society that does not show you that you are important. It's having a very real impact on mothers. If you ever asked a mother how she's doing, well, chances are she'll answer with an overly exuberant, oh, so great, because that's what we want her to say. But if given the opportunity to be vulnerable, what she'll share may be far different. Running on fumes. This is nothing like I thought it would be. I'm not a good mom. In short, moms are burning out. 
Now, burnout is more than a buzzword. The World Health Organization recently added burnout as a diagnosable occupational phenomenon. But since parenthood is, for most mothers, a significant component of their existence, like an occupation, it seems only fair that the definition apply to them, too. So here's how they define burnout, and as I share, I ask you to bring to mind the image of a mother, or yourself, and see if it resonates. Feelings of exhaustion or depletion. Increased mental distance from one's job, or feelings of negativism or cynicism related to one's job. Reduced professional efficacy. Have we heard these phrases before? I'm running on fumes. This is nothing like I thought it would be. I'm not a good mom. Burnout leads to stress, decreased immunity and increased infections, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, depression. Our lack of concern for mothers is causing them to burn out, and burnout is killing our mothers. Modern motherhood isn't working. But what if it did? What if instead of burning out, moms thrived? Here's the thing. Our community needs moms on so many levels. Research shows us again and again that when mothers are healthy, their children are healthier. Almost every aspect of a child's health that we can measure is improved when that child's mother is healthy. We owe it to children to keep their moms from burning out. In 40% of households in the United States, moms are the primary or sole income maker. If we want families to do well, we have to prevent burnout in moms. I'm curious to see how this impacts our small but mighty community, I called the school board, to find out what percentage of the parent-teacher group was comprised of moms. Any guesses? 99%. Can't have the entirety of the parent-teacher group burning out. Moms are problem solvers, multitaskers, healers. In fact, I can't think of a single genre of task that a mother can't do. Simply put, we need moms to be okay. So how do we do it? How do we heal modern motherhood? Because this is a huge problem, built on the back of even greater ones systemic racism, economic disparities, sexism, heteronormative expectations, and more. To consider this list is to get discouraged. I will go to my grave fighting for mothers. There's a good chance it's going to take that long. But that doesn't mean we just stop. We cannot fix the maternal mortality crisis tonight. We cannot get parental leave funded tonight. But we can do something to support a mother tonight. And it starts with one simple fact. When people receive social support, they experience less burnout. So maybe we start there. What is social support? Well, social support is the availability in actuality or perception of emotional and physical help by the people around you. Essentially, social support is feeling like the people around you care about you, feeling like the people around you think that you're important. What would happen if mothers felt important, cared about, nurtured by their communities? Well, to start, mothers that receive social support enjoy motherhood more and think that they're better mothers. Deeper than that, though, is that women that receive social support have a lower risk of giving birth to a low birth weight baby, have a lower risk of preterm labor, have fewer hospitalizations, fewer C-sections, and less postpartum depression. The economic ramifications of this alone are huge, but way more important is that supporting mothers saves lives. This is hard work. All revolutions are. This is a battle worth fighting. Because when mothers thrive, 
communities thrive? What if we became the community that supported mothers, truly supported them? Huge solutions are compilations of small solutions. And small solutions are the hallmark of a grassroots cultural shift. So I ask you, what can you do to nudge the culture just a little? Do you own or manage a business that employs a mom? Could you find a way to give her one extra week of maternity leave? Or could you give her a few extra sick days to use when her child is too sick to go to daycare, even if the law says you don't have to? Because maybe that extra sick day means that she doesn't have to choose between her child's health and her paycheck. When you see a mom with her tantruming child at the grocery store, could you smile and say, I've been there. You're doing great. Because maybe you'll show her that she's not, in fact, a bad mom. She's just a mom. When you see a woman struggling to get her stroller up the stairs, could you be the one to stop and help? Because maybe you'll remind her that the load of motherhood is not hers alone to bear. And could you be on alert for the next time a mom in your life says some variation of, I'm not okay? Could you, in that moment, stop what you're doing, turn to her, and say, tell me more. I'm here for you. Do you need help? Because maybe she'll say yes. And maybe you'll be the one that helps get her in front of the therapist that diagnoses her postpartum depression and saves her life. Little things lead to big things. And big things lead to massive shifts. Let me tell you that whatever thing you choose, it's so much more than that thing. It's the message that comes along with it that says you are doing a good job and the job you are doing is important. That says, yeah, this is really hard. But we've got you. Cultural change is overwhelming and daunting and seemingly impossible. Kind of like birth, right? Doesn't mean we don't do it. We take it little by little, one contraction at a time. When a woman crosses the threshold into motherhood, she does so with deep power and incredible vulnerability. Her heart is open and raw, and the energy that is around her becomes her inner voice. In this moment of moments, we have two choices. We can instill doubt, not enoughness and fear, where we can love her or vote for the latter. We have to do a better job taking care of mothers. Mothers need us, and we need mothers. Thank you.